This video was made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex topics simply for 20% off by being one of the first 200 to sign up at brilliant.org slash H-A-I. Welcome to beautiful, sunny Victorville, California. Now, Victorville really is an amazing place. It's tough, but if I were to try to encapsulate its essence in a single sentence, I would tell you that it's a city located in the Victor Valley of southwestern San Bernardino County, California. Now, I know you're probably rearing to go after that, but before you book your tickets, I've just got to tell you that, unfortunately, they don't actually have an airport. Well, they do, but it just doesn't have passenger flights. It's a strange airport, you see, one where plenty of planes fly in, but far fewer fly out. For example, you see these guys? These are 15 Boeing 747 aircraft that flew into Victorville years ago, plus two other disgusting non-747 aircraft. At their original list price, these 15 here are worth more than $3.5 billion. With that kind of money, you could buy almost half a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, the entirety of Hong Kong Disneyland, or more than three Boeing 747s. So the question is, why did British Airways, Air New Zealand, Qantas, and others fly 15 perfectly good aircraft into the middle of the Mojave Desert and leave them there? Oh, and there are also a couple of other planes here. Why do airlines leave billions upon billions of dollars of aircraft deserted in a desert? The answer has to do with capitalism juice, also known as fuel. For airlines, fuel efficiency essentially just means money efficiency. That's because fuel is airlines' biggest single cost, and so they'll do just about anything to reduce their fuel consumption. As it turns out, that includes sending perfectly good aircraft to the desert. For example, a lot of the aircraft here in Victorville are British Airways 747s, which, per passenger, use about a gallon of fuel per 70 miles flown. Meanwhile, the 777-9s that are replacing BA's 747s burn about 97 miles per gallon per passenger. Therefore, at least on paper, replacing these 747s will reduce fuel costs by almost 30%. In the short term, that leaves more fuel for Delta to dump on children, and then in the long term, this saves BA money even if it requires spending hundreds of millions of dollars on each new aircraft. That's a big reason why airlines retire perfectly good aircraft, because newer models are far more fuel efficient. But why does BA fly their aircraft all the way across the Atlantic to retire them here in Victorville, California? Is it because they have over 50 Mexican restaurants, year-round sunny weather, and ample social activities for older residents? Probably partially, although there's really no way to know for sure, but it's also because Victorville is in the Mojave Desert. In fact, almost all aircraft boneyards are in deserts as placing them there gives two advantages. First, desert soil is typically flat and strong, so aircraft can sit on it with no need to pave the ground. Additionally, the desert air is dry, which reduces corrosion in the metal elements of the aircraft. Although, why do they care about corrosion if the aircraft are retired? Well, aircraft can always come out of retirement. If an airline is truly done with an aircraft, they can and usually do send it to scrapping. But of course, you can't unscrap an aircraft, despite what the appearance of some United Jets would lead you to believe. Aircraft are sent to Victorville when airlines are not truly done with them, even if they're done flying them. Those British Airways 747s, for example, parked here at Victorville could be used for one of two purposes. First off, considering the aircraft arrived here perfectly functioning, the airline can use the parts from these aircraft to replace any faulty parts on the 747s they still have flying, of which the airline has 32. The other option is that the planes could be sold to another airline. Just because British Airways doesn't want the aircraft doesn't mean nobody else does. Quite often, old aircraft sitting in boneyards like Victorville will end up bought by cargo airlines. That's because FedEx, for example, just doesn't care as much about how much fuel they use. It's not that they're actively trying to turn Memphis into a beach destination, even though they're doing a great job getting there. It's just about economics. You see, British Airways, as a passenger airline, keeps a given aircraft airborne for more than 10 hours per day. FedEx, on the other hand, will fly their aircraft for less than 4 hours per day. That's because cargo airlines, focusing their network on overnight delivery, tend to fly each aircraft from their hub to their destination in the early hours of the morning to deliver packages, then leave the aircraft sitting at the destination all day, then fly it back in the evening to take packages to be sorted at the hub. Because of that, they spend a smaller proportion of their time flying, and so fuel cost is much less important to cargo airlines in comparison to passenger airlines. 
A super efficient airplane costs FedEx just as much as BA, but FedEx flies at far fewer hours per day and therefore the increased efficiency just makes a smaller difference. FedEx will therefore have some ancient aircraft in its fleet. Its oldest for a while was an MD-10 that started its life with United Airlines in 1971 and then flew for 49 years before FedEx retired it last year to, of all places, Victorville. Meanwhile, all the 20 or 30 year old aircraft there are waiting for a shot at a second life with FedEx, UPS, or another airline that just doesn't care about how much gas they guzzle. Now say you go and retire to a desert. One thing you can do there, no matter if you have tons of time or none at all, is embrace lifelong learning and acquire new knowledge with Brilliant. It's never too early or too late in life to learn, and what makes Brilliant so special is that they help you learn the kinds of things that you were forced to when you were young — calculus, quantum mechanics, computer science, logic, and more — but they actually make it fun and approachable. The feeling of achievement when you finally understand something inconceivably complicated is amazing, and Brilliant's teaching style of breaking down big scary concepts into their small intuitive chunks makes that possible for anyone. You can even do this on the go with their app, and if you're the kind of person who has very little free time but still wants to learn new things, you can set a goal to do each of their daily challenges in those small free moments you get. If you're one of the first 200 to sign up at brilliant.org/hai, you'll even get 20% off.